So I'm at the University of Oxford. Uh, some of you might recognise these people here. Uh, do you mind just introducing who you are? Yeah, I'm Koizu and I was on this camp last year for the video. Yeah, um, I'm now at Cambridge doing engineering. So Cambridge? And um, I'm Ryan. I was also at this camp last year um, and I was also interviewed at the Royal Society last year. Yeah. Um, and I'm now doing physics and philosophy at Oxford. OK, so um, which is better, Oxford or Cambridge? Cambridge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so I don't think we're going to get to the, the bottom of that. But what's really nice, actually, is that both of you, you're here, um, you're, you're, you've now finished your A-level physics. Uh, what, what grade did you get? Um, I got four A-stars. Uh, five A-stars. OK, so you both did really well in your exams. And I know some of the advice that you gave about doing lots of practice papers and just as many questions as possible. I think a lot of people are taking that on board and you know, that's, I think, the best bit, bits of advice we've had. Um, but this camp here, so it's at Oxford University. What is your part in it this year? And you know, why are there other people on the camp in the first place? Um, so as an alumni of the IFO from last year, I'm helping train this year's IFO cohort. Um, um, and um, yeah, I, I'm basically doing the same thing. Um, yeah, I, I'm an alum of the camp, um, and I thought it would be nice to give back to the, uh, yeah, to the Olympiads um, and volunteer to like, teach some of the sessions. And so what do you mean by being like an alumni of the IFO or the IOAA? What, what, what does that have to involve, really? Yeah, so, so being an alum just means you um, basically have done the competition, yeah. um, attend the competition, and then, um, yeah, uh, like in, in previous years. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess, yeah, you, you get you, like you, you, you then become a part of the um, alum commu uh, alumni community. Okay, and so you did the international astrophysics and astronomy Olympiad. Yeah, and where was that held? I was in Poland. And how did uh, you get on in that? Uh, yeah, I got a gold medal. So yeah, so pretty good. Poland. Yeah. Pretty good. Yeah, and and for you, you did the uh, yeah. the international physics Olympiad. Uh, where was that? So that was in Tokyo, Japan. And how how did that go? Got a silver. Very good. Not, not as good, but hey, it is what it is. I, no, I think it's, it's pretty good to get a silver <laughs> in an international Olympiad. And so you did the competition, uh, and now you're both at university, you're both studying you know, quite hard, but you still come back over your Easter holidays. And, and what, what are you actually doing on this camp for, the, for the, the people who are coming through? I mean, like part of the job is just like keeping the kids like, entertained. Kids? Like, <laughs> students. <laughs> start that again? No, 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 that's no, good, no. that's good, yeah. Thank you. Um, keeping them entertained and like reassuring them that it's hard and we found it hard as well. But then um, we also have roles teaching them this time around as well. So we're on the other side of the barrier. Yeah. And, and how are you finding teaching compared to just sort of being in the lecture itself? Is that a different sort of skill set that you have to develop? And oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Um, when you're teaching, you need to constantly be thinking about like, um, like what am I missing out? Um, because yeah. like it may make sense in your own head, but um, when you're, when you're actually explaining it to someone else, if you miss out one step, it all falls apart for the other person. Yeah. And they, they just don't understand it if you miss anything out. So I found it quite challenging. It's, it's like a different kind of challenge, isn't it? It's not just the maths or the physics that you're thinking about. It's how you actually deliver that to other people. And it's like, yeah, having to present is it's quite nerve wracking. And actually, when you sit up in front of people and especially when you're doing it for the first time, it's a completely different kind of way of, of actually sort of thinking about the, the science, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. And um, from here, uh, are you, what, what's happening next? So there's a lot of students at the moment, they're, they're currently in lectures, and we've got another video where uh, I interviewed some of the students. Um, what happens for both of you guys after this, after this Olympiad? Are you going to keep involved in the project and keep coming back to it? Or what's your sort of future plans, really? I mean, I'd like to, I'd like to come back. I'm actually... Um, I'm doing one course this year, but I'm hoping to maybe do two next year because they sort of link into each other. Okay. But I didn't have enough time to prepare resources for the first one this time around. Yeah. Um, no, it'd be nice to stay involved because it's a lot of the older leaders who stay around. It's almost like a, a family with them. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a generally nice group of people to be with. It is. And actually coming back here, it's really nice to see some sort of friendly faces. And a lot of them are people who've been students and I've interviewed previously and they've sort of given exam tips. And now they've sort of gone through the process and now they're coming back and delivering lectures. Um, for you guys, in terms of university, if we talk about that, uh, so you're at Oxford, um, yeah. how are you finding it? What, what's, what's the big difference of university compared to how, how life was at school? Yeah, I'd say the, the main thing is um, like the independence you get. So um, it's a lot more like you need to 
um, like work for yourself. So you need to decide, you need to plan out your study schedule yourself. Mm -hmm. You need to plan out like what lectures you're going to. Um, there's there's no like timetable you're just given. You need to um, look at you need to go on the course websites and find the lectures that are running for your mm -hmm. course. And if you don't turn up at a lecture, does anybody? Is there like somebody with a register in the lectures, or is it very <laughs> much just honesty that you should be going to the things? That yeah, you're supposed to it, go to? It, I think it differs from each university, but yeah. at Oxford and Cambridge, no, no one really cares if you don't go to lectures. Well, so, they, not, not at the time, but maybe later on if you, yeah. if you don't do that. Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so it's um, so it's uh, it's a lot on like yourself. So you need to um, be mature about like whether um, attending this lecture will be beneficial for you mm -hmm. and making that decision for yourself. Yeah, uh, and for you in terms of like. I guess homework and stuff. There's obviously going to be lectures when you're there with a, with somebody kind of actually delivering content, and the work that you're doing outside of that. What what does that involve? Have you got seminars? Are there kind of small group tuition, or how, how does that work for you? Yeah, so we have like labs to reinforce the lecture knowledge. Mm -hmm. There's a common trend where the labs tend to come before the lecture, which is not amazingly oh, really? helpful. <laughs> yeah, well they have to schedule it around everyone in the cohort. Yeah. So there's you sometimes do content in labs before mm -hmm. you do it in lectures. Yeah. And then we have problem sheets which sort of associate with the lecture content, and it's normally progressive as you go along. Okay. And the idea is at Oxford they call them tutorials, but in Cambridge we call them supervisions. Mm -hmm. You go through these problem sheets and your solutions with the supervisor, or tutor mm -hmm. um, in the session and then they provide you with feedback how you've done or potentially if you haven't managed to solve a question how you could go about it maybe not giving you the answer but mm -hmm. giving a hint at least yeah yeah uh, and in terms of advice for students who may be I guess going to be maybe doing A levels at the moment going on to university next year what's your advice for sort of starting uni and that that those first few months from from like how you found it yourself uh, timetable really well and when you make a timetable follow the timetable because there's no point making like a jam-packed day mm -hmm. and then seeing on your phone all day it just doesn't really do anything yeah um, yeah but like talk to people everyone has like different things that they've found by themselves mm -hmm. so I remember I was I did a lot of timetabling in my first term but then there were other people who did other things yeah and I sort of incorporated that into how I work as well and that was really helpful and in terms of making your own timetable Actually, so going back to that, was that like using Excel? Was it using like uh, Notion, or how did you actually make that timetable? Was it just a bit of paper that you wrote stuff down on? So I'm aware a lot of people use fancy things like Notion yeah. and all of that. I use Google Timetable Fair because enough. it's really convenient. Yeah. And then you can also like import calendars into Google Timetable. So some courses in Cambridge, I'm aware, they provide like a downloadable timetable mm -hmm. for like labs or like yeah. lectures. So you can just download that, put that straight into your timetable, and you've already got most of your day structured. Okay, so just keeping it fairly simple, just using like Google Calendar, just works for you. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so Ryan, um, in terms of your advice for people starting university, what what did you find helpful? Yeah, so so was, so definitely what I found helpful was um, definitely having the correct mindset when going to university. Mm -hmm. So um, I was yeah, so so so, so when I studied physics, um, and in first year, it was very mathematical, and we we're learning. Um, a really different kind of maths that you would encounter in maths or further maths. Yeah. Um, so it's very proof based, um, and I really, I, I felt it was really different. So I, I kind of struggled with the moving on to the next step. Mm -hmm. So what I found was helpful was um, having an open open mindset um, and thinking about um, like how how you can like learn more effectively in this new environment. Yeah. Um, so I, I think constantly adapting um, to your environment is um, a very useful mindset to have. But, but I think it's still interesting how like, you know, you, you kind of done like the International Olympiads, you've got gold medals, and it's still challenging, isn't it, the first year of university? Yeah, definitely. And, yeah. and I think, did, did most people find it challenging at times? Yeah, but yeah, I mean, pretty, pretty much everyone found, found, found it challenging. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, they, they go at such a fast mm -hmm. pace. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite hard to, like, <laughs> not, be, not be challenged. Yeah, I mean, if you're if you're being challenged, it's, it's kind of a good thing as well. Yeah, it just shows you're working at your like full potential. Absolutely, and I think it is very different to A levels, which are kind of, you know, there's there's only so much you have to learn, and it's often very structured, and you know, there's there's somebody there making sure that you're in every lesson, and if you're not doing the work, there's somebody kind of chasing you. Whereas university, it's kind of it's really down to yourself, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Um, any final tips for anybody watching? Um, revise hard for your A levels. It's worth it in the end. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, yeah. And anything for you? Final final words of wisdom? Um, 
No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> there we go then. Uh, both of you, it's really good to see you again. And uh, again, it's, it's really nice to sort of compare how you are now compared to when I first met you and stuff. And yeah, I think you're doing great stuff with the Olympiads. So thanks for, thanks for being on film. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.